Adventures with Books has been paid for in part by the Sholo Library Friends. If you'd like to become a member of the Sholo Library Friends, please call 532-4070. Hi! I'm here at the Silver Creek Fish Hatchery, and on today's program we're going to learn all about trout, so welcome. outside and gone fishing before? It's a great hobby and it's something that you can do with your whole family. I brought a book today about a different kind of fish, one that you also might have at home. It's called Memoirs of a Goldfish and it's by Devin Sillian. So let's see what happens to this goldfish. Day one, I swam around my bowl Looks pretty dull. Day two, I swam around my bowl twice. See a pattern here. Day three, I swam around my bowl. I thought about taking a nap, but fish don't sleep. So I swam around my bowl. Well, it doesn't sound very fun. Day four. I got some company today. I don't like the looks of him one bit. He doesn't say anything. He just bubbles. That's funny. Day five. Mr. Bubbles still hasn't said a word. He just looks at me. I said hello today and he said He's creepy. Day six. Today, my bowl looks like a garden. There are a bunch of plants in here now. I guess I'll have to water them. Great. It's funny because we're already living in the water. Day seven, Mr. Bubbles and I now have company. He's a snail. He says his name is Mervyn and he likes to eat the slime off the inside of the bowl. He's disgusting. It's true, snails do help clean things up. Day eight. Things are getting very crowded. While watering the plants, I met a crab named Fred. I offered him my fin and he nearly cut it off. Yikes. Even Mr. Bubbles is afraid of him. Fred says I should stay on my side of the bowl. Look, I said, the whole bowl is my side of the bowl. He snapped his claw and Mervyn fainted. I gotta get out of here. Day nine. That does it. My bowl now contains a sunken pirate ship, two guppies named Rhoda and Clark, and an angelfish named Cha-Cha who says she's from Hollywood. I can't turn around without bumping into something. At least Mervyn is happy. There's more gunk on the side of the bowl every day. It's getting pretty crowded. Day 10. This is ridiculous. I was trying to find room for a swim today when Rhoda and Clark told me they're going to have babies soon. Like, there's room for that. Pfft. Fred knocked Mr. Bubbles over and he became tangled in the plants. Cha-Cha said she couldn't help with Mr. Bubbles but needed me to apply her sunscreen. The sides of the bowl are covered in slime and Mervyn says he's too full to eat anymore. Yuck! It does look a little bit crowded for a fish bowl. Day 11. I'm a nervous wreck. Trying to avoid Fred, I turned around quickly this morning and came face to face with my reflection in a mirror. I nearly jumped out of my gills. I don't even look like myself anymore. I need to relax. Day 12. Uh oh, I sense trouble. I've had it. 
Rhoda and Clark were racing around the bowl. Fred was fighting with Mr. Bubbles. Mervyn kept belching, and Cha-Cha told me I was standing in her light. I just lost it. This is my bowl, I screamed. I want my bowl back. It got mad. Oh, day 13. Today I got my wish, sort of, with a whoosh and a splash and a clank and a plunge. I was suddenly in a very tiny bowl of clear, pure water. Ah. It was small, but it was all mine. I was heavenly. I swam around my new bowl twice. But I started to wonder what had happened to everyone. When I last saw Mr. Bubbles, he was tangled in green. Who would help him? Poor Mervyn was probably as sick as a dogfish. He needs me. Cha-Cha will get a sunburn without me around. What about Rhoda and Clark? Did Rhoda have her baby guppies? There's probably a thousand of them. They need me to make guppy bottles and change guppy diapers. Even Fred needs me. I'm the only one who can really talk to the crabby guy. Have they even noticed I'm gone? Does anyone miss me? I started to cry. <laughs> and it's really not that easy for a fish to do. Day 14. Hey, that looks better. After a long, sad night, there was a whoosh and a splash and a clank and a plunge. And I was suddenly sprayed in the face by bubbles. Mr. Bubbles gurgled a happy tune. Rhoda and Clark raced by me like two speedboats, followed by 12 of the cutest baby guppies you've ever seen. Mervyn waved his tail at me from the nice clean glass of our enormous tank. Cha-Cha sat happily beneath an umbrella. I think even Fred missed me. Well, that looks a lot better. Everybody has room now. We were all back together, and I looked around and realized I was a part of a big family. I guess I must have smiled because Clark said, you look happy. I wanted to see for myself. Where's the mirror, I asked. What mirror, asked Clark. We don't have a mirror here, said Fred. No mirror. No wonder I didn't look like myself. It wasn't me I was seeing. Her name is Gracie, and she's the color of a fresh tangerine. She's a Pisces, just like me. And today we're going to swim around the tank together. Twice. So that's nice. So we got a new great big tank and a friend to boot. And now I'm going to show you how to make your own fish art. This is a really easy project, and I bet you have all the stuff hanging around at your house that you need to do this. Uh, first thing that you need is a piece of bubble wrap. Uh, if you might have gotten some in a package, a uh, good recycling project. Um, you can also buy it at Walmart or Kmart, places like that if you don't have any at home. You need scissors to cut out your project. Uh, you need a marker or a pen to draw a picture of your fish. Uh, you need a hole punch uh, to use at the end to uh, kind of cut a little display spot there. You need a glue stick that dries clear. You probably have these at home too, because you need clear glue. You also need some colored markers to color your picture, any color you want. And you also need a picture of a fish. Um, I drew a picture of a trout, uh, but you could do anything you want. This one will be a little trickier to cut out. Um, if you need to kind of practice on your scissor skills, you can do a simpler fish like that. Uh, you can do a shark. That one's pretty fun. Or you could do just a really simple fish um, that you, you know, like I said, it could be an ocean fish. Anything that's in your imagination you can do. I'm gonna go with the trout today. So let's get started. I colored the fins a little bit. I like this project because on the outside of the fish, you don't have to stay inside the lines because you're gonna cut around it. So it doesn't matter if you're sloppy or not when you're coloring. So let's just add some color really fast to this. And like I said, you have to be careful on the inside, but not the outside of the... Uh... So we're just gonna color this up real quick. Be careful going around the eye of the fish. And you can spend a lot of time on it if you want to. You can make it really intricate. I'm just doing something really simple today just to kind of get you started with the idea. You could go back and add some spots if you want to. A lot of trout have spots on them. So you can do that. 
could add a little pink stripe at the top. The rainbow trout actually have all different colors and things on them, so you could do that. And then I usually also color around the gill. That's usually pink or red where the gills are. So there we go. So we have our finished picture. The next thing we're gonna do, this is kind of a fun part. We're just gonna take a glue stick and we're just gonna put glue all over that fish. Um, if you think that you might, you know, kind of get off your page, you might want to put a piece of newspaper underneath. If you're careful, it should be okay. So this shows purple, but it actually dries clear. So you are just going to put glue all over that fish. Shouldn't take a super long time. If it runs out a little more, just use all the glue you need. But like I said, make sure, especially the outside parts, the fins, because that's where we're going to be cutting out. Make sure that that is completely glued. All right, I can kind of tell by looking, we've covered the whole fish with glue. So the next thing we're going to add is the bubble wrap. There's a flat side and a bubbly side. So you want to put the flat side down on top of the fish, because that way the scales will look like they're raised up. So just lay it down over the fish, smooth it out, okay, and let that dry a little while. I actually do have another fish that I made yesterday. Um, this one actually looks more like a brown trout. So the last part of this is we're just going to cut out around the outline of the fish. And since you glued it down, those bubbles are just gonna stick wherever you cut it. So let's just cut that out really quickly. This is where you have to be a little bit careful when you're cutting out around it. And that's when you discover if you made a really fancy uh, fish shape that you know it takes a little more trouble to cut it out, but it still looks pretty cool when you get finished. And you could also do this project, um, anything with scales. So you could make a snake, a lizard, a dragon, you know, whatever your, whatever your imagination thinks of. This is a very easy project to do with the bubble wrap. And it really does look like scales when you're finished. Just a couple more little bits here be done. Okay, so we'll scoop that out of the way. Nice little part here, cut out the mouth. So you can see now the fish actually looks like it has scales, so that's kind of cool. And the last thing, if you want to display this, there's a couple of things you can do. Um, I have a couple of lizards over at the library that I made. Um, you can put the little bits of magnet on the back. Um, you can usually get magnet with a double stick tape on it at the craft store or maybe Walmart. Um, so you can do that and you can stick it on the fridge or on some metal surface. Or the other thing that you can do is take a hole punch if you want to make it look like you caught a fish. And you just want to go right over those bubbles. Punch a hole right there. You can kind of punch through the bubble, kind of pick that off. And then take a big paper clip, just unfold it. Whoops, mm, not very good paper clips. I always bring a spare. I'm gonna fold that open. And you're just gonna poke it through the hole that you just made with the hole punch. And there you go, it'll look like you caught a fish. Um, you could hang this on a wire, you know, you could hang it from your ceiling fan in your room, hang it on the door, you could do all kinds of cool stuff with it. So that is a really great way to have fish art in your house. And now let's go see some real trout. Hi, I'm here with Clint at the Silver Creek Fish Hatchery. 
Thanks for taking time right. to talk with us today. Oh, no problem at all. So now what is the uh, significance of this little pond right here? What is that? This is actually the headwater to Silver Creek and it runs through our raceways. And this is the water that actually flows through to be able to raise the fish. Oh, to help um, the trout, okay. Yeah, yep. And there's about a thousand gallons per minute that comes out of the ground here and flows through our units. So is that a spring so, that just comes up? Yeah, yep. It's just a spring that comes right out of the ground and and uh, basically just flows over our fish and it's uh, clean water to be able to um, raise our fish in. Okay. So, so what are those two green uh, kind of covered things down there? They, the covers do two things. Um, one is that they produce shade for the units so that they don't heat up as much oh, and produce okay. as much algae. That's a good idea, And then right? the other thing is we have some netting and between the covers and the netting, it keeps birds out and other predators that might get in there and take our fish. Oh, I'm guessing so, blue herons probably yeah, think that's herons. a really excellent buffet, okay. Yeah, and ospreys also and oh, even raccoons or oh other mammals gosh. too, so. Okay, yeah. cool. So do you have uh, fish eggs in there or what, what do you actually have in here? Um, these are actually just adult fish that we have. Uh, at our facility, we don't do any eggs. Um, we're kind of more of a growery versus a hatchery. Oh, okay. uh, other hatcheries hatch out the fish and then they give them to us when they're about two or three inches long and then we grow them out to the stocking size. Okay. And then how big is the stocking size? Um, about 10 inches on average is, okay. is the goal that we try to meet when we start stocking them. And now how big does a fish have to be before you can keep it if you catch it? Um, with trout, you can keep any size. Um, it doesn't really matter. Oh, so, really? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. As long as you want to take them home and eat them, you know, it really... <laughs> yeah, they're, they're very good. I, I, I like to go fishing all the time. But. Uh, so they just live in here for how long? Um, we grow them at about three quarters of an inch uh, per month. So they're here, usually we get them in sometime during the winter time, um, so about maybe eight months. Oh wow, okay, so that's quite a long time. How do you get them from here out to the lake? Yeah, so we use a big net and we push all of the fish towards the end, uh -huh. and then there's a big pump at the end. And the pump actually sucks the fish and water up into a big hopper and uh -huh. then it separates the two and the water goes back into the raceway and the fish go down a chute into our truck. Oh, so cool. So it makes it really easy. So do you take all the fish out of here or just a certain uh, just weight? A, yeah, amount? so what we, what we do is we take a certain amount out depending on where we're gonna go stock and how many we wanna put in there. And the way that we decide, well, the way that we can tell how many we take out is actually there's a little sight gauge on the side of the truck and then however much water is displaced, that's how many fish we put oh, into the truck. Oh, so wow, that so way. that's really easy. Yeah, you don't have yeah. to like, you know, wage fish or that right. would take forever, yeah. Right. That's cool. So how many fish are actually in these runways? I mean, do you have any idea? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we keep track of it pretty well. Right now there's actually around 5,000 in this unit and then in the unit above there's about 7,000. Wow, uh, now because um, they're smaller? No, that's just kind of how it's worked out uh, oh, okay. through the stocking season. So initially we had about 25,000 in each unit. And now that it's getting close to the end of stocking season, we're getting, you know, less fish in there right okay. now. So. so what is the stocking season, just out of curiosity? Uh, we usually start in about the beginning of May and then we end sometime in September. So kind of like the summer months and then... Yeah, okay. yeah when more people are out fishing. Okay, so. and then where are these fish going to go? Where, do, What lakes and areas do you stock? Yeah, so we stock most of the White Mountain uh, creeks and rivers. Um, um, the East Fork of Black and uh, also normally the West Fork of the Black and Sheep's Crossing. Some of the um, lakes as well, like uh, Fool's Hollow Lake or Sholo Lake will stock. Okay. Um, also here at Silver Creek. Wow, so creeks so, and lakes in both. Yeah. Yep. That's cool. That's quite a long drive to get there. I know exactly where all those places are. So. So when you're fishing and you catch a fish, uh, it's important how you handle them if you want to release them back into the water and keep them alive. Uh, one thing that you can do is get your hands nice and wet. And what that does is it prevents uh, your hands from rubbing off a slime coat that's on the fish. And the fish have the slime coat. It's kind of an immune, it helps their immune system. It's basically kind of how we have uh, ways that our body keeps us healthy. That's one of the ways that fish uh, keep themselves healthy is that slime coat. It keeps different parasites and things from adhering to them. Yeah, so from zero to nine, you actually don't need a license. And then from 10 years old up to 17, it's a $5 license. And that oh, that's lasts- still a great deal. Yeah, yeah, and it lasts a whole year from when you buy it. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then uh, from 18 and above, it's actually just $37. Oh, that's so, still a good deal because you can fish a lot for that, so. Yeah, the whole year, yeah. That's cool. Um, you can catch up to six fish, six trout. 
and then different species it's different but if you look in the regulations then it'll it'll tell you how many okay. of each species you can catch and what kind of trout do we have here today um in these units right here we have rainbow trout okay um normally on the, this hatchery we'll have either rainbow trout or apache trout oh, okay they're really so. they're both really pretty so it's yeah cool. Well, it was really exciting to uh, see the fish stocked and on their way. Thanks for talking to us. Well, and, thanks uh, for coming by. Appreciate okay, it. appreciate it. And we'll hopefully see you out in the stream somewhere. And I'll see you back at the library. Those trout were really cool. And it was interesting to see that they actually get a truck ride around to the different lakes and ponds and places where they stock them. I brought some books that you can check out at the library, too. The first book is called Trout, Trout, Trout. And this is a hilarious book. It's a poem. And it has a bunch of different fishes and silly pictures of them. And all the fish in these books are real, in this book is real. So this is a very fun poem to read if you like different kinds of fish. I also brought The Fish Who Cried Wolf, kind of like The Boy Who Cried Wolf, but this one takes place in the ocean and there's octopi and skates and all sorts of interesting flounders and things. So that's a very fun story to read too. It's by uh, Julia Donaldson. I pretty much like all of her books. They're all really funny. A book about trout. If you want to learn more interesting facts about trout, this book is chock full of them. Uh, it has the different parts of a trout. Let's see what else. Uh, what they like to eat. Different habitats and places they like to live. So if you really want to be a fish nerd like I am and learn a lot more facts about trout, that is a great book to get. If you want to try fishing, this book's called Fishing in a Brook. This is a great book that's for beginning fishermen or women. Talks about where to fish, what kind of bobbers to use, hooks and things like that, what kind of poles, depending on what kind of fish you're uh, looking for, how to make special knots so that the uh, line doesn't slip off. All different kinds of information. You could just read this book and go right out and go fishing. So this is a great book too. If you just want to learn more about fish in general, eyewitness books are always fantastic. This one's called Fish. Uh, it has freshwater, ocean fish. Um, here's scales, just like the scales we made on our art project. So that talks about fish scales, and some have them, and some have skin and not scales. All sorts of fish bones and fish heads and specialized fish. So this has a lot of fish facts in it also. The last book that I brought is very cool. This is in the reference section. It says for reference on the bottom of this book, so you cannot check it out. But this is the fish that live in Arizona. So that's pretty cool. So if you see a fish and you're not sure what kind it is, it might be a, a humpback chub. There's all these fish live in Arizona. So this is a very cool book. Uh, what else do we have? A striped mu a mullet. Hmm, that's interesting. I didn't even know this lived in Arizona. So this is another really Cutthroat trout live in some areas. So this is a great fish book. Um, it has little facts about the fish. So if you really, really want to learn all about the fish in Arizona, this is the book that you can come and look at, but you can't check it out. Well, I hope you learned something interesting today, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>